Hey guys, we've got some breaking news. Um, well, it's not breaking, but it is tragic news. Uh, and as you know, Tommy, uh, I hate shelf roads. And the reason I hate shelf roads is because they're very dangerous. And recently, uh, there was a very tragic accident on a very a notorious shelf road here in Colorado. That's right. Yeah, Black Bear Pass, and it's an iconic off-road trail, but it can end very poorly um, if the situation uh, turns bad. So in this video, we are discussing a rollover that recently occurred on Black Bear Pass involving a Ford Bronco Sport and the outcome. Now, the Black Bear Pass is one of Colorado's most beautiful and I think most dangerous passes. It's just outside of Telluride. In fact, when you're at the top of the pass, you're looking probably about two to 3,000 feet straight down into Telluride. Uh, and people uh, drive it uh, for accomplishment, for fun, uh, but unfortunately this uh, party of two women and a dog weren't actually doing Black Bear Pass. They were going up to Bridal Fall, uh, Bridal Vales Fall, which is, um, well, it's a unique situation. Why don't you read what happened and kind of give some context to this and then we'll we'll kind of talk about it. The first thing you need to know is that Black Bear Pass is a one-way downhill into Telluride. And this is the San Miguel County Sheriff that posted on Facebook, 2.30 p.m. deputies have learned that the women were driving up Bridal Vale Road and entered the one-way Black Bear Pass going the wrong way. The passenger told deputies they did not see the sign indicating the beginning of the one-way pass. After a couple of switchbacks, they decided that it was best to turn around. The passenger then stepped out of the vehicle to help the driver navigate, and while backing up, two of the wheels went high enough on the embankment to cause the vehicle to begin to roll. The 2021 Ford Bronco rolled off the cliff an estimated 400 feet, ejecting the driver, the dog, and the vehicle's engine before coming to a stop. Yeah, so um, let's give it some context. So the way Black Bear Pass works is uh, more, most of the time you go up and around the back of the mountain and then you come up uh, to the pass uh, and then you go down what we like to call the, it's not really a waterfall, but there is a water section which is very buck clenchy and then uh, there are a bunch of serpentines that take you down into Telluride and you can go about halfway up to go to a very uh, famous, I think it's a place where people get married, right? The falls, yep. Bridal Vale Falls. But after that, the pass is a one way and apparently these two women went beyond that point. Uh, and that's uh, where it gets really dangerous and it was hailing and sleeting and they decided to turn around. And uh, unfortunately, uh, they rolled their Bronco Sport uh, down the mountain. I think it was about 400 feet. Uh, and one, like you said, was ejected. The other one ended up in the hospital in serious condition. And if you're wondering about the dog, the dog also got hurt but not badly bumps and bruises yep so the one-year-old golden doodle chewy was treated for minor injuries um, and according to initial reports the driver was an out-of-state 23 year old female who was ejected and suffered serious injuries the driver was treated on scene by telluride fire protection district medics and transported to telluride regional medical center for further care now this is the second rollover on black bear pass in the last several years there's a youtube video of a jeep going over as well uh, and let's talk about what a shelf road is Tommy. There have been a number of incidents specifically on this one, but a shelf road is typically a uh, one vehicle road uh, with one or two edges that are against a cliff face. Uh, in this case, there are a series of switchbacks, but there is typically in a shelf road very little to no room to pass another vehicle. There is typically very little to no uh, guardrail protection about going over the edge, um, and they can lead to some dangerous situations. Now, the important thing to note is that um, most of Black Bear Pass, even though it's a shelf road on the edge of a cliff, it's pretty easy. It's just uh, mostly a dirt road with some rocks and some little bits of, uh, uh, you know, undulations here and there. But for the most part, it is a very simple pass. Uh, the danger can occur when you're going up a one way, right, the wrong way. That can really cause issues, especially if you hit oncoming traffic. Uh, when you attempt to turn around, as um, was an instance in this case, uh, it's pretty easy to make an error and end up going over. Um, and then the other danger is, you know, not paying attention and just slipping off the edge or maybe even having the, the trailer road away to a point where you end up going over the edge. Yeah, I think the biggest point is that on most shelf roads in Colorado, there are no guardrails. Uh, and if you um, make a simple mistake, uh, you will roll off the mountain. And because you are on the side, literally on the side of a mountain, and the shelf road was blasted into the mountain to usually get access to a mine of some sorts. And Black Bear Pass, uh, like I said, you drive around the back of the mountain, then you come down to the front side of the mountain, you go over this kind of uh, very tilty and out of 
uh, kind of camber uh, area, which is very scary because now you're looking straight down into the city of Telluride. There's probably, what would you say, a three, 4,000 foot drop in front of you. And then you make that first serpentine in front of where the waterfall is. And then there's another serpentine you have to make where there's a rock right in the corner. So it's very hard to, to make that turn because if you uh, try to cut the turn, you will hit the rock, which is a big boulder. And so we were following a raptor once, and I swear this guy had to do a 200-point turn to make it around that boulder. So I think some important things that I kind of want to analyze about this rollover, though, which speak to the Ford Bronco Sport, is what we see in these pictures here. Now, it's worth noting this is the Sport, so it is the crossover Bronco, not the big body on frame one. Um, with the 35s. Uh, what we see here though is a crumpled vehicle, but it's amazing in my opinion on how well the passenger cell um, withstood the fall down the 400 foot cliff. I mean, look at how intact the roof line is. Look at how intact the doors are. You don't see much uh, intrusion into the passenger bay based on the pictures we have here. This is super, super, super impressive. Um, in my opinion, that a unibody vehicle was able to withstand this much force. I mean, the engine is ripped out of the thing. The trunk is no longer in the picture, but the passenger compartment with the airbags deployed looks to be intact. Yeah, I'm amazed. Uh, and, uh, you know, kudos to Ford for building a vehicle uh, that is basically built on the escape platform that survived a rollover accident like this and allowing the passenger uh, to survive the accident. Uh, usually you would think that a vehicle like this would pancake, uh, especially if there's multiple, multiple turns going down the side of a mountain. So uh, it is very impressive. Now, a lot of the videos that we do, uh, unfortunately, are on shelf road. So if you've watched some of our things, uh, Webster Pass is a shelf road. Um, we go go up uh, to uh, Deer Creek. That's a shelf road. Um, we do the other side of it, St. John. That's a shelf road. Uh, so we have a lot of experience on shelf roads. Uh, and as much as you know, I love Colorado. I would say if if you're new to the state and if you are thinking about going off roading, um, you are uh, in very unmaintained uh, and very uh, potentially life life threatening. Uh, situations when you go off-road and I think this demonstrates it uh, and so uh, we're always very careful we always bring a buddy uh, and uh, yeah I hate shelf roads just for this reason and I would strongly recommend paying attention to the one-way signs so you don't end up in a situation where you are going up against traffic and then you fo force a pass because that is a potential for a lot of dangerous situations not that that is what happened here but it's just worth noting too I'm um, always pay attention to the trail direction signs uh, but I mean, I'm impressed that the Bronco Sport held up. I'm very pleased that n none of the passengers in the vehicle, the driver or the dog, um, passed away. And I'm also uh, very relieved that no one was like hiking because there's a lot of people that hike up this road too that could have been injured on a fall from that kind of height with the vehicle. Yeah, you know, a little bit behind the scenes, when we do our videos, uh, we're always uh, very careful about where we're going and how we're going and we usually won't shoot a video on some place where we haven't gone before because we need to know what the lay of the land is. Uh, the other thing that I think people sometimes underestimate when you're off-roading is you'll be driving along and it'll be a beautiful sunny day and you'll be enjoying a wonderful uh, Colorado Pass and it will go from uh, 0 to 10 uh, in intensity like that. There's no warning, it just happens. The good news is though, thanks to the internet and thanks to social media, you are able to do your research on trails ahead of time and you are able to figure out what the difficulty rating is and you are able to know what to expect. So if you are looking to go out and try something new for the first time, be sure to check an app like Onyx Off-Road or one of the other uh, online services to uh, make sure you know what you're going into and make sure you have the required equipment and recommended ground clearance and that kind of thing. Yeah, and, and Black Bear Pass, it has this reputation, and rightfully so, of being uh, very dangerous, but at the same time, it's not very difficult, right? There are two sections on the entire pass that are at all, I would say, technical, but yet at the same time, because you're driving basically down the side of a mountain, that's not hard to do, but if you make one mistake, it goes from being easy to being deadly, and and that's really why, you know, this is such a uh, such a tragic story. So we just wanted to report on this news and uh, make you guys aware of what was going on up by Black Bear Pass and Telluride. Uh, as far as I know, the incident has been cleared um, for some time now, and the pass is uh, reopened, although probably not for much longer because the snow is imminent. Um, but for next year, if you decide to come out, be sure to pay attention to the signs and take it easy. Yeah, and you know, right now we're in a situation where because of 
uh, the overlanding craze, because of the side-by-side -side craze, we're seeing a lot of people coming to Colorado who are, uh, you know, doing uh, a lot of interesting and fun and, you know, out-of-the-way passes. We've got a ton of them. In Colorado, anytime there's a road, it will eventually turn into a double track, which will turn into a single track, which will turn into a mine, right, at some point. Uh, but but it's well worth uh, noting uh, that it's 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 it can be um, deadly and it can be life threatening and um, uh, I'm I'm just you know hopeful that, that that people like you said you know do some research before you go and hit some of these trails and there are much easier trails in Telluride so if you're looking to go to Telluride which is one of the most beautiful areas in Colorado I, I would before I would do Black Bear Pass I would suggest you look at Imogene or you look at Engineer or you just did uh, Ophir. That's right, yeah, so maybe, shelf road. maybe explore those first, um, and then once you feel comfortable, go give Black Bear a whirl, because it is one of the most iconic passes in the country. I, I remember when we did it the second time, I was like, there was this like feeling in my stomach before we did it, I was really nervous and really worried about it, you know, uh, and then obviously after you do it, there's a sense of accomplishment, uh, but, but pay attention to that, that feeling in your tummy, it's, it's there for a reason. All right, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, ciao. Next time on For A Few Bucks Less. Now, Toby's a real expert with anything with four wheels, and he specializes in German cars, but he works on everything, which is pretty cool, right? Anything, I said that right? All work on a four wheeler. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's some good condition fluid. Uh, that's, you know, what we call uh, someone's butch craft. That's not factory. Oh my gosh, that's a very dangerous. High temperature operation is active. Okay. So it means the transmission probably got too hot at one point. Gotcha. Did they have a squirrel up in the headliner? Oh my god. Oh my. Holy smoker, that's a big oil leak. That's what we call uh, either a big one for a long time or a little one for a long time. Which of the three is best and which is the worst? I would say the best for the price that was spent would have been the